so I'm here with my dad, um, Elvis Foster, and he's a professor at Keene State College and he teaches computer science. And he's going to talk to us today about the effects that computers have had on society. Uh, hey, Dad. Hey, son. How you doing? I'm good. Um, so, Dad, my first question for you is, um, computers were first introduced in the, na in the late 1940s to mid-1950s, and you started studying computer science in the 80s. Uh, can you tell us the general attitude that people had towards computer science as a professional discipline? My father, who grew up in the 1940s, had no idea what it was. <laughs> um, so when I told him that I wanted to study computer science, he believed in me, he had faith in me, but he had never seen a computer. When I went to study at the university in uh, 1983, I had never seen a computer myself. Um, but people were very excited about the new discipline. There were lots of people who wanted to study electronic engineering and computer science. In fact, I went to study mathematics and I was wooed into studying electronic engineering and computer science. So there was a buzz around it. People really wanted to find out more about computer science. Oh, okay. Um, having a PhD in computer science, how do you think uh, computer uses has changed since the time you got your first degree? To now? It, it has, it has uh, changed a lot. Uh, like way back uh, in the 1980s when I studied computer science, no, very few people were able to own computers and had them in their homes. Computer science, computers, computers were basically confined to companies and they would set up large data centers. And, but then the PC had been introduced by IBM and people started buying personal computers. But it really has changed dramatically over the years. And look, it has a affected pretty much all aspect of life uh, in the 21st century, which is just remarkable, really is remarkable. Uh, for instance, uh, web technology. When I first studied computer science, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have the World Wide Web. We have networks now where you can communicate with people from uh, different countries in, in a matter of seconds. Aviation has been affected. All the airlines are controlled nowadays by computer technology. Uh, television industry has been affected. Every single aspect of life in the 21st century has been affected by computer science. So that's awesome. Wow, okay. Okay, um, has the social aspect of society changed um, dramatically due to the usage of computers as well as other technologies? Yes, um, it has, uh, uh, in the sense that people communicate more freely now. For instance, uh, kids have cell phones. In, in when I was a kid, I didn't know what that was. Uh, people can text each other. Um, all these things, all these developments and these things that we take for granted nowadays, they all came about because of the huge advances that were made in computer science. All the conveniences that you see around you. Uh, you have GPS systems in automobiles, for instance. All of these things, all of the technological conveniences that you can point to uh, in, in as, as normal uh, part of life, uh, they came about because of computer technology. So it pretty much has affected all professional disciplines and almost all aspects of life. Oh, okay. Okay, next question. So since the time that the human race began, we've never really seen so many changes as we're having today due to the technology and computers. Um, in the 40s, for example, is when they just started making computers, it used to take up uh, two spaces, uh, I mean two rooms just for one computer. And now, now, that we, um, now that we continue, the cell phones, for example, have more information on them than these huge computers had. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think led to so much use of technology today? Simple, uh, the need for comfort. As human beings, we like to be comfortable. And we have uh, very curious minds. 
we always want to find out what's the next step, what's the next level of comfort that we can achieve. Uh, my father wanted to have a comfortable life for his kids and uh, I want to provide a comfortable life for my kids and so this drive to provide comfort and uh, for ourselves as human beings is what really drives uh, the computer technology because what we try to do in computer science is to solve problems that human beings face and to uh, make those problems more manageable and, and, and the solutions more doable for them. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so many people think that the usage of computers had, has contributed to the corruption of the society and that very soon instead of wanting a real poppy, we might want a robot poppy. Uh, what do you think what do you think about this? What do you have to say? Yes, I've heard that, that, that argument. Uh, here's what I would say to that. Um, computer science and computer technology is not what has corrupted society. Uh, society has been corrupted because there are corrupt minds. When you have corrupt minds, then those minds will use whatever technology is available to promulgate the corruption. And so, yes, uh, the argument can be made that computer technology has aided and abetted corruption, but the corruption didn't originate with the computer technology. It originated with a corrupt mind. So could um, the argument be made about tele television technology. Um, we see a lot of corrupt things on the internet. We see a lot of corrupt things on the television. Why? Human beings. We are the ones who created these things. And so the adjustment has to start in the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, what, what do you think the addiction rate to computer usage, uh, what do you think of the addiction rate to computer usage as well as to other electronic devices? Do you think that they're over-exaggerated or Yes, um, well, I wouldn't call it addiction. We have become more reliant on our computer technology because we have found out as a modern society that uh, this technology can help us to solve problems, which is fine. It's, it's just that um, we need to be responsible in how it's used. Uh, I'm sure nobody would want to give up using their cell phones these days uh, to go back to the age when you want to communicate with someone you had to send a telegram. Life has changed. And so in adjusting to the changes of life, uh, we found uh, computer technology to be uh, more useful and convenient, and that's okay. So why wouldn't you call it addiction when uh, some kids spend hours on just texting for no reason instead of having face-to-face -face time or just on Facebook, for example? That I would call addiction, and, 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 and the problem, uh, that speaks to a bigger problem that society has to deal with, and that is how do we educate people to be responsible members of society, and now that we have computer technology, how do we make knowledge in this area part of the education program? That's where uh, there has been uh, a weakness in our educational system, particularly in the West. Uh, which is why, for instance, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, the United States is not doing too well on the world market in terms of uh, testing of high school kids and their abilities. We tend to be lagging. Uh, 17 in uh, science, I think, and 24 in mathematics. That's, that, that's the last test result, which is not very good. Uh, so the issue is, how do we reform our educational system? Embracing computer technology, but at the same time producing students who are more rounded and more who are more able to responsibly use this technology and to face the challenges of life. Well, we're gonna take a break, and I, but I just wanna ask you one question before we, we go to part two. Um, do you think that because of uh, the less time that people are spending face to face with people and the more time being spent texting or computer or communicating by via computer, 
Uh, do you think that kids today are growing up with less of the social skills? Yes, this is what I was speaking to earlier. Yeah. Um, yes, and, 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 and that can be addressed uh, by good parenting as well as a, a, a more focused approach to education, how we educate our kids in elementary school and in high school. We still want to make them rounded. We still want to make them aware of all the things that they need to be aware of uh, in social sciences and in history and social uh, and uh, sociology and so on. All those things are important. However, part of this knowledge has to be uh, computer technology as well and how to use this technology responsibly, not just uh, wasting time sending text messages to and from friends. That really is not computer technology. That's just using an application. And you can waste uh, a lot of time using applications and still be computer illiterate. And that is what we find uh, happening a lot uh, with a lot of our, 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 mm -hmm. our high school graduates. And so that problem needs to be addressed. That's why the government uh, is now talking about educational reform, and rightly so. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break now, and we'll, we'll come back to you in part two.